rather than straining our brain to come up with a new layout, we're going to use the same layout that we used to describe the legacy method of making columns to do, use the text and make columns, or what I call the wizard method of making columns. So also an advantage to that is you know exactly where we're going. This is where we want to wind up. Uh, so let's, nevertheless, if in case you didn't look at that other tutorial, then uh, we'll start from scratch and create this layout using the wizard method. So we'll do a font, remove fonts, do new. Yes, we'll uh, abandon that. We have a plate 9 inches tall, 12 inches wide, and we'll put some values smaller in here. We want 12 lines, which will give us an appropriate letter height and we'll OK that. Now we'll create our header information. So we want capital S which will become a squiggle so we'll press the plus sign from the keypad to select that object and then we'll change that into ornamental. We'll select, we'll, let's do a reverse select all and put those in Roman four line. Roosevelt is not quite big enough so we'll make that a little larger. Then we'll do an automatic layout. That takes everything we have, throws it out into the center, and then we think where we actually want this. I don't want to manually put those up at the top, so let's use our automatic layout format to adjust that. Let's maybe make that about 4 tenths on the bottom, 6.8 inches on the bottom. And then we'll uh, do an automatic. Nothing happens until we do automatic layout, which would be F8 or F9. That slams it up at the top, and that looks about right. Then, let's think about our columns. We want our columns to begin. I want the top of the columns to start at about two and a half inches, and maybe go down to eight and a half, or maybe our, our top and bottom margin, let's think of it a half inch on the bottom, and to start at about two and a half inches. So we'll go to the um, text and make columns and we want three columns nine rows let's make our letter height about uh, let's say point uh, 0.4 column width we have 12 inches with which we can work we have three columns so that means the maximum would be uh, four four inches in each column. So let's not put 4, let's put 3.2. Space between the columns, we want a half inch at least in between. Top of the top line, I actually failed to call something to your attention, so I'm going to back up now. At this point, before we move on, I have mine already adjusted, row spacing by setting baseline. Yours will probably say enter row spacing, unless you've already modified it. By default it'll say enter row spacing. So we want row spacing by setting baseline. First line measured from top of line, not baseline. And then I'm going to enter text by rows. Not that that matters as long as you know what it is. So with that set up, uh, then I've got 3 by 9 letter height four tenths of an inch, column width 3.2, space between columns half inch, top row we want that we decided uh, 2.5 and the baseline of the bottom row that would be eight and a half because we wanted a half inch bottom so we should have text going from this point to this point that's just strictly visual and then let me explain that uh, we have this copy that we actually created from our legacy method still over in our clipboard so we'll edit and copy that to be sure it's in our clipboard then we'll come back here and click in here and type that in uh, instead of typing it in that's one of the advantages 
of this method is we can bring this in from our uh, email client or notepad or word processor or so forth. But again, because our data was by row, here's column one, column two, column three, column one, column two, and so forth. Because our data was by row, we, that's why we set up our enter text by rows. So then when we position all this, that should stick that out there about where we want it. And uh, we actually wanted that in a different font. We could have adjusted that before, but we failed to, so we'll adjust that now. Again, calling your attention that anything we want to do to these columns can be done after the wizard has thrown them out on the screen. And if we decide we wanted, and that actually looks pretty good to me, but let's decide that we actually wanted a little more room at the top. Notice when we told it OK on the columns wizard, it selected all of the columns, which will allow us, be sure you do this, which will allow us to delete all of those to go right back to our wizard, make columns, and let's change just that which needs change. Let's maybe make that 2.7. That'll give us 2 tenths of an inch more. And then when we OK it again, that throws it out there again. So my point is, if it's not right, very often, more often than not, when I throw this out on the screen, there's something that I wished I had done different after I see the visual effect. Well, then we can delete it immediately, go back and make that change, and uh, come back in here. Uh, by the same token, we could grab a hold of this. We like it a little different. Let's just move it up a little. Now, in this case, I wanted these to be, uh, well, let, yeah, let's go ahead with that. Let's make these, let's make the first two columns left justified. And let's make the right column right justified. But now, one thing I want to call your attention is that this is condensed down to 88%. The fact remains that we really didn't have quite enough room for probably Mrs. Tomlinson nor kindergarten, and so we had to condense it because all of these columns have uh, actually the same amount of room in between them. But at this point, we can adjust that. Let's come in here and let's make our left column a little farther to the left. So let's take about, I'm going to put minus 0.7 in here. A very important the minus here that says take away from what we now have. We now have a left margin of 0.44. So if we take away minus 0.7, That'll make that uh, somewhat below 4 tenths of an inch. So we'll press Enter. And notice that allowed our letters to space back out. Not completely, don't quite have enough room here. So let's go just a little more. Let's go uh, minus 0.2. And then over here, let's do the same thing. Let's, uh, in this case, we want our left margin to be a little smaller also. So let's go to left margin and maybe make that uh, 0 0.5. Now let's make it 0 0.8 since that's, uh, there we go. Now notice we've moved our aspect ratio back up to 100. So we have all of our fonts the way they should be. The point is we can do anything we want to do. Let's say in this case, we want to move this column to the right. Let's say four ten, let's keep it simple. Let's do a half inch. I'm going to click on left margin and say plus 0.5. Before I press enter, though, I'm going to click on down arrow to the right margin. I'm going to make that minus 0.5. Then when I press enter, that shifts that over. Now let me explain that. I'd, added to the left margin, that's the distance from here to here, I took away from the right margin, so there is no way that's going to condense it. We, the column width is exactly the same. I added to one side, took away from the other, so that just shifted it over, keeping it in aspect ratio. Had I added to the left margin and not taken away from the right margin, 
then it would have scrunched this in, condensed this, as well as all of the other text, because uh, we have equal condensation on. So let's see how that looks. There we have completed this project using the columns wizard.